Thank you, Jesus, for today. Lord, the prayer that I asked weeks ago, I am still asking now. I have no idea what I'm doing outside of your Holy Spirit. Jesus, we are dullards without you. We are fools and beasts without you. Jesus, we have entered into your holy temple and we saw that we are brutish and just animals without you. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that presents to us Jesus Christ in us. Lord, you told me to prepare this message. Lord, I thank you for today's challenges because you want gold. You don't want cereal. You don't want fluff. You don't want wood, hay, or stubble. You want gold, silver, and precious gems. Lord, here is our offering. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 25. This, uh, this message has been some time in coming. I've shared about it before. And uh, uh, the parable of the ten versions. You know, what's interesting is that uh, this is in Jesus' name, I rebuke any spirits of witchcraft, divination, or anything coming against this property, against this message, because this is a message that is very important in these last days. I pray the blood of Jesus right now over this. Because there will be submission to the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is a message that is not, I don't think it's been preached on. I really don't. Because I have heard far and wide this message on the parable of the ten virgins preached. And none of it sits right. Until, and, and even I've tried to share with it years ago, until now. And I believe it's time. Folks, guys, we're in the end times. Are you ready for the day of temptation? Are you ready for the day of pressing? In, in your good times, have you stored up your oil to have light? Are you ready for that day? That's what this message is about, the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Okay, ten virgins. Five of them were foolish. Five of them were sensible. They were virgins. They were pure, unstained, unblemished. Five were wise, five were foolish. Proverbs 1, what do we know about wisdom? The, begin, the, the, blank, of, the blank of this is the beginning of wisdom. What is it? Nice and loud. Fear of the Lord. Fear. One more time. Fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. It's given to us to do what first? Understand or obey? Obey. Obey first. Understand it comes after. They were all virgins. Meeting the groom. Folks, I'm going to challenge every one of us. Are you being wise? The groom is Christ. We know this. The virgin is the believer. Or at least, yes, it, 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 it's the believer. They're, they're purified. They say they're saved. Yes, we're not questioning salvation. We're not going there. That's, that's another discussion. But five were wise and five were foolish. And we will find out 
what happens to the foolish virgins. This should put you in fear. Not fear because I'm gonna sp uh, uh, someone's going to come down and spank you. No, fear and trembling because you serve a mighty God and He owns you. It's a call to holiness. It's a call to diligence. It's a call to seeking His face. Seeking why you are doing what you're doing. And it doesn't have eternal value. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take olive oil with them. But the sensible ones took oil in their flasks with their lamps. Since the groom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Now, I've heard before in, in the previous chapter, Matthew 24, who then is the faithful and sensible slave, verse 45, whom his master has put in charge of his household to give them food at the proper time. That slave, 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 they're owned by the master, finds him working when he comes will be rewarded. I assure you, he'll put him in charge of all his possessions. But if that wicked slave says in his heart, my master is delayed. This is not the unbeliever, guys. This is you and me. Are you saying in your heart, it's not even a statement of blatant saying, oh, he's not coming. No, it never starts there. It starts in your heart. Nah. And I've preached on this. If something in your heart where there's a rule or, or there's something, a conviction where, where you know you shouldn't be doing such and such, and you think in your heart, no big deal. You just said my master has delayed his coming. It's not a big deal. God will understand. You have just started that road where you have sealing your faith. Where now the master will come at an hour you do not expect. You will find yourself eating and drinking with the drunk. You will find yourself among the world. You will find yourself in complacency and ease and not one of the things of the Lord. You will think it's easy. I'll just sit back. Hey, I'm a Christian. I got it going for me. God loves me. God loves me. I love David Wilkes. He said, we're getting ready to love the devil. And he will come when you don't expect because you weren't ready. Here's Matthew 25. The foolish virgins and the wise virgins became drowsy and fell asleep. They slept. Or shall we say, they died. They were all dead. The master came and woke them up. The wise virgins had oil in their lamps. The foolish ones did not. In the middle of the night, there was a shout. Here's the groom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. But the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. The sensible ones, and I'm going to unpack this. The Lord showed this to me years ago, and it's time to bring it out. No, there won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell and buy oil for yourselves. When they had gone to buy some, the groom arrived. Then those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins came and said, Master, Master, open up for us. Matthew 7, Lord, Lord. He said, I didn't know you. Yeah. For 25, 12. But he replied, I assure you, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert because you do not know either the day or the hour. Now, I'm going to unpack that the oil in their flasks is not the Holy Spirit. It's not because the Holy Spirit is always there. This looks delicious. Now, it can be affected by the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to show you what happens. Go to Proverbs 17, verse 16. No, 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 no. Okay. Why does a fool have money in his hand with no intention of buying wisdom? Okay. The foolish ones said, give us some of your oil.
Now, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was being pressed. He was afflicted. No one could stay watch with him. He said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. No one could watch with him. The disciples were scared and ran off. The word Gethsemane is important. In Hebrew, it's gatshmanim. Pressing of oils. So, that oil, that oil is not the Holy Spirit. It is affected by the Holy Spirit. Remember what I said. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, uh, in fact, it says knowledge and instruction come with that, with that fear. What does Jesus say in, in, in Luke? You say you love me, but you don't do what I say. First John, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Okay, I'm not even going to go into which commandment you keep. You keep that which Jesus tells you. How, do you. how do you know what he tells you? You get on your face and you cry out, Jesus, talk to me. Baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Give me the way in which I ought to go. Wisdom is gained by stumbling. What does it say in Proverbs? The righteous stop us. Fall seven times and recovers, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Your righteousness is not your own. So the righteous stumble seven times. That means it's the righteous one in you causing your flesh to fail so you can get back up and learn again. So you can get back up and learn again. And learn to fear the Lord. That's how you learn to love. Lord, I didn't do it right. Forgive me. Okay, get back up. You're learning an instruction and, and, and every time you submit to correction and reproof, look all throughout the scripture. Psalms. Psalm 119. It was good that I was afflicted that I may, that I may what? Learn your law. Learn your way. Learn your instruction. Amen. This is my comfort and my affliction that your word gives me life. Your daily afflictions, man, we have circumstances. That's fine. We, we get that. But do you submit to the correction of God when he says, son, you're not going to get away from this trouble. Why are you trying to get out of it? Why are you trying to get out of the difficulty? Let me produce in you. Go to Galatians 5. What does it say? The fruit. You cannot be the light of the world if you have no oil. That oil comes from pressing. The word was this. Are the circumstances keeping you comfortable or pressing to produce the oil necessary for light until that final day? Are you bathing in that lie solution so that someone can devour your resources in the process? When you take olives, for you to break them down to be eaten, eaten, you put them in a solution of sodium hydroxide or lye. It's the same chemical solution for making soap. It's very caustic, but it has to break it down. But that means not somebody can eat it. But olives, you have to take it and press it to get oil. Is somebody, are you like that frog in the kettle? Saying, oh, this is a little comfortable. It's fine. Or are you letting someone slap you, proverbially, on your butt and say, thank you for your rebuke. It is, what, oil to my head? Is that what it says in the Psalms? Mm. Let another man rebuke me? It is oil? It's favor? A friend loves at all times? Better is open rebuke than hidden love? Faithful are the wounds of a friend? Profuse are the kisses of an enemy? Are you allowing those rebukes and you turning and submitting to the fact that your flesh 
Socks? Stinks? Your flesh gets in the way, folks! Submit to God's chastising! Because in that moment, He's producing in you oil. And when you die, you will be ready when, when the bridegroom comes and says, Behold, come meet him. But the foolish ones didn't submit. They didn't submit to the circumstances. When their rights were trampled, they said, You know what? I'm going to fight for my rights. I'm not going to let them do this to me. When someone wrongs you, I'll get them back. I'll file a lawsuit. Or they can't do this to me. Or I'm not going to forgive them. Or... No, I didn't do anything wrong. No, it's no big deal. No, they, they just need to get over it. Oh, they just took it personally. They just got their feelings hurt. Really? My Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't want it done to you, don't allow that to happen to someone else. If their heart hurts and they get personally offended, you better be the first one on your face. I'm so sorry. What did I do? You go to them. Please forgive me. I recognize that I hurt you. I'm sorry. Please rebuke me. Where are the true, the true spirit of, I'm not advocating denomination. John Wesley, with his Methodism, before it was a denomination, they all had a covenant, a pact, with each member. So I'm going to go back to that. To say... I submit myself to you to let you rebuke me. If you see something in me that's unholy and you allow me to rebuke you if I see something that is not right here. We don't open ourselves up as a Christian nation, or quote unquote, excuse me, Christian group, Christians, to let one another rebuke us. We have a dear brother, I, I forever in his debt who came to me humbly and said, Erez, you're involved in something that's wrong and in a relationship that's detrimental. This is wrong. And I was like, oh God, thank you. You saved my life. I'm forever in his death. He saved my life because I was in a moment of weakness. I don't want to grab it. I was in a moment of vulnerability. And he looked out for me. I'm forever grateful for that, for that gentleman. Do you submit yourself to one another? Doing what the Bible says. Forgiving each other. Do you let others correct you? Or do you demand that they don't? Do you let them in to correct you? Do you want precious soul? Do you want your precious soul for eternity to be of good use to produce more fruit? Your life is not your own. Do you want to be of use to the master? Which means you gotta let him press your olives. Or do you wanna just bask in that lie and let someone eat your resources? What do you want? Do you want them? Do you wanna be ready at the end? Where you said, Lord, I had oil and I was ready. Listen, he's going to come at a time you don't expect. He came for my wife at a time we didn't expect, but he said, I'm taking her home. My first wife. She was ready. She took those afflictions. She submitted herself to correction. She was humble. The call is humility. The call is we are undeserving servants doing what we're told. The foolish virgins, they were believers who refused correction, refused reproof, didn't bother to ask the questions. Lord, go to Psalm 139. I need to read this. This should be everybody's heart. And if it's not your heart and you're just here for... You get a bigger slice of the pie. I would be fearing right now. I would be on my face saying, oh God, is this me? Search me, oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the everlasting way or some translations, ancient paths. Do you want him to search 
to you. Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing to the vision of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. We love Hebrews 4.12. Do you like Hebrews 4.13? That says no creature is hidden from him, but all things are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. You are naked and exposed before him. Do you want him to search you? Or do you just want to hide behind your fig leaf and go to hell? Do you want to play the church game? Or do you want holiness? Do you want to be examined and let them persecute you? Even the Christians who persecute you, they say, yeah, you say you follow Jesus. Sure, yeah, God told you. Are you willing for that? Because my Bible says the enemies of one will be of your own what? Household. That includes the household of God. Are you willing for that? And if you're not, you better be saying, okay, Lord, I need to, I need to seek you. Audit me. Search me. Where's my loyalty? And let him strip you. Let him get you naked. And let him point everything. And the only thing out of your mouth better be amen. It better be yes, Lord. You're right. And then you will see how much he loves you. Kids, you better let your parents do that. Parents, you better let your kids see your lives. And say, mommy, daddy, you're being a hypocrite. And you better, mommy, daddy, say, oh God, I'm sorry, where am I not being truthful? You better let them, you better let them in. Because they're there to save your life. And you're there to save theirs. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we need each other. We are going to hell in a handbasket in this generation. There's a time coming when there's a massive persecution and the churches are going to kick the true remnant out. They're going to kick him out so hard and they're going to be chasing them. They're going to be wanting them dead. Spiritually speaking, I don't know about physically, maybe. We saw it in Germany. Look at Adolf Hitler. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was raising godly seed spiritually. We better be ready for that. We have got to say, okay, Lord, you've got to talk to me because I so need you right now. I am hearing so many voices. You better be on your face begging him for, for, for God, help me. You guys have got to understand we are not our own. And we don't know the left from right outside of Jesus Christ. The time is dark and it's getting darker. Thank you. The bell has been rung and it cannot be unrung. Hmm. We've been in a time of grace. Time of grace is running out. I love the imagery. One hand is holding the door of judgment. Another hand is saying, come. One day they're both going to drop. Mm. Guys, get oil in your lamps. Start submitting to correction. Guys, if you know you did something wrong, allow the Lord to show you. Don't start seeking it. Say, Lord, show me right now. I want to make it right. I want to do it right. I'm sorry. Show me, and I'll do it. And, and immediately he'll point to something, and your first response, I guarantee it, will be like, no, 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 that can't be it. If you have to say that, that's it. I'm going to let you know right now, that's it. Let him do it. Submit yourselves to the living God. I'll tell from personal experience. I, uh... I've, I've heard a lot of things levied against me. Doesn't matter. You're seeking your own glory. You're seeking, you know, I, we got married in May 12th. Is that two weeks ago? You're seeking your own will. You, yeah, you talk holiness, you talk this, you talk that. The only thing I'm getting from this is persecution. Do you want the favor of God or do you want your own selfish desires? I'm going to tell you this. This is not selfish. We need to be seeking him at all times. It's a hard message. It's a good message. Get oil in your lamps. Don't sit back in that solution. In that warm, comfortable bath. In your lives. And your resources, your olives will be eaten before you know it. 
and there'll be nothing left. Sure, you, you may die at ease. You'll come before the bridegroom and he'll say, You didn't know me, Philippians 3.10. That I may what? Know him? The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Submit yourselves to the corrections of God. Submit yourselves to the circumstances. I understand there's different... I'm not even going to go to it. It's God first, Jesus first who says... Are you going to trust me? Are you going to submit to me? Let him guide your steps. You need to submit first. It's not pleasant, but it's good. Father, we lift this up to you. I've delivered my soul. May you have your perfect will. In Jesus' name, amen.